Okay, so I want to learn Linux together. However, one of the questions I get asked the most often is, Sean, how can I learn Linux if I'm using Windows or Mac? Well, uh, the answer is a little bit different when it comes to Linux and Mac, but Windows is a lot easier. Uh, virtualization is the answer, and I want to show you how to do that. We'll cover Macintosh in another video because the answer there gets a little more complicated. But let's look at what you can do to learn Linux if you're using Windows right now. <laughs> So first of all, there are tons of virtualization platforms out there. Uh, there's VMware, there's, um, I, I'm sure there's others. I, <laughs> VMware just comes to the top of my mind. Uh, but what I recommend is that you do VirtualBox. It's, it's owned by Oracle, but it's free and you can download it and use it on your own. And, and it doesn't just give you the ability to run Linux. It gives you a couple abilities to not really cheat, uh, but some really cool things that make it even more betterer which is not a word, even better than installing it on your local computer and rebooting. So let's look at how to uh, do some cool things with virtualization, specifically using VirtualBox in Windows. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to do is go to virtualbox.org and just click on the big download VirtualBox, whatever it is. Oh, you want your computer to stay connected to the internet. I don't know why mine isn't here, but uh, you go to this website and you're just gonna be able to download VirtualBox uh, without any problem at all. It's going to install. I'm not gonna walk you through the installation process, because really, I mean, you're going to be able to install an, an application on your Windows box. Once it's installed, uh, you're going to install Linux. And I know that this seems a little weird. I'm not actually going to cover that in this video. We will install Linux uh, in, in a virtual machine in another video. But I want to show you in this video why VirtualBox is the way to go. So as long as you have a few key things in your uh, computer, your desktop computer, your laptop, you're going to be able to install virtual machines just fine. Now, some of the things you're going to have to watch for is VT-X. These are the hardware virtualization options. You may have to turn these on in BIOS, in your system BIOS when it starts up and you like press delete or F1 or whatever to get into setup. You might have to look for VTX settings in the BIOS in order to enable virtualization. The other thing, and this isn't strictly required, but if you have less than eight gigabytes of RAM on your system, you're not going to be able to run a whole lot of virtual machines, at least not virtual machines with a graphical user interface. So uh, this is my recommended absolute minimum. But if you have four gigabytes, you could run a VM. It would just be like a text only VM. It's not going to have like a GUI for you to use. And it's really cool because it's like having a complete set of hardware that runs in a little window in your box. So you have a complete booted Linux system with networking and everything else, and it just runs in a window. It's super cool. In fact, this is exactly that. This is Linux running in a window inside my uh, inside my little Wacom tablet here that I use for demonstration. So this is a full-blown system, and it has a full Ubuntu install, even though I'm running on Windows. So you can see this is Ubuntu Mate, and it's running on here. Now, when you do this, you also have a couple other really, really cool features. The first cool feature, and what I have here here is this is the Ubuntu or this is the VMware VirtualBox Manager. This will just show you a whole list of your running virtual machines over here on the left. Here I have the one that is running. And if you look at settings, there are some super cool things down here in the networking tab, because what this allows you to do is attach this virtual machine to one of several different types of networks. And I only want to cover a couple of these, but uh, it's the main one. So NAT is, you know, network address translation. This means that it sets up a network behind your host computer and it basically lets it get on the internet. So it, it, it gets on the internet by using your computer as a router. Uh, there's also bridge adapter and that actually puts your virtual machine directly on the network that your host is on. So it's like gets an, uh, it gets an address from your home router or whatever, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, internal network and host only adapter. These are pretty much the same thing uh, that they set up this isolated network that isn't connected to your network at all, like your real network, but it allows you to set up elaborate internal network schemes so you can have multiple VMs that talk to each other on the same network. And so like 
like I said, NAT is the default and it gives you a list of things that just make computers work. It has its own internal DHCP server on your host. So you get your own network address for every VM that's connected to the NAT. It gets you internet access because it allows you to go through your host machines connection to the internet. Uh, and that gets you an IP address that will allow you to access the internet. The other type now bridge, this is, this is kind of a really neat one. I really like to use bridge networking if I want to experiment on my own local network. So if I want my virtual machines to connect to my personal home network or my office network, if you connect them to a bridge, it's basically like you plug in a computer into a network port in your wall. Like I said, your home router or your office router will have to give it an address and that will depend or that will determine whether or not you can get on the internet with the computer. And then host only and internal, these are really the same thing. This is like you have a, a network switch that is just connected to nothing and then you plug your virtual machines into that uh, host only or internal network the difference between host only and internal is that with a host only network you can actually contact the host machine so like my windows machine is going to be in the same network it's going to be plugged into the same box that we set up uh, whereas with internal networking the host is not going to be connected to that box so internal networking is just like a standalone switch that your virtual machines are going to connect to and then the last really really cool thing that you can do in in a virtual box or any virtualization platform but virtual box if you're on windows is to create snapshots now snapshots are incredible and what snapshots do is they allow you to take a snapshot haha <laughs> that's the name no but they allow you to take a point in time and give you the ability to roll back if you do something really really dumb on your virtual machine so it's just that it's taking a snapshot in time and before you do anything on a virtual machine that might mess things up or that you don't want to be permanent if you take that snapshot you can revert back to it. And it's as if none of those things that you did actually happened. So if you're in doubt, take a snapshot because it doesn't take up a ton, a ton of uh, real estate or resources on your computer to take that snapshot and you can roll back to it. Now, a quick example I'll give you is let's say we're on our virtual Ubuntu Mate machine here and I'm going to go up into machine, take snapshot, and I'm gonna name this snapshot before I do something really dumb. So click, okay, it's going to take a snapshot of my computer, of my virtual machine, not, not my actual host computer. And now if I do something really incredibly dumb, like sudo rm minus rf forward slash, also, do not do this command. This command is going to wipe out my entire computer. I know, spoiler alert, but do not do rm minus f forward slash as sudo because it's just going to mess everything up. I'm trying to give you an example of a terrible thing that I'll be happy I have a snapshot for. So don't do this on your computer, but let's do it to see what happens. All right, press enter, put in my password. Oh, and it's not even going to let me do that. So I have to add another command. So it's trying to stop me from shooting myself in the foot. So no preserve root all right it's going to go through and do all sorts of terrible things on my computer or try to oh it's dying because like i said i just completely wiped out my whole operating system by doing that one command and so now if i didn't have a snapshot i would have to start over and reinstall my computer from scratch and if i had files on there they would be gone like documents so we don't want to do that but because i have a snapshot i can do things like test dumb commands like that and not actually shoot myself in the foot. So I'll show you really quick how to restore it and then we'll be done. And as you can see, it is not happy with what I did. It's completely broken here. So let's close that. I'm gonna power off the machine. Now I could actually just restore the snapshot right from here, which is what I would normally do if I had done something dumb, but I wanna show you where we can manipulate snapshots. So if I were to do that, then yes, it would actually restore it and fix it for me because that's the last snapshot I took. But I'm just gonna say power off the machine. And now we're back here at our, our manager. If we go and click right here and go to snapshots, we will see I have a current state, which is the totally screwed up state that we don't want to have. But see the snapshot we have before I do something really dumb, we can restore that snapshot. Uh, I don't want to create a snapshot of my screwed up computer. So no, I'm not going to do that. I'll restore it to that state. And now I'm just going to start the computer up. 
and it's going to restore it to that exact moment that I took the snapshot before I completely screwed up my whole computer. And now you'll see it's back to working and everything is fine. So that's it. That's using VirtualBox on Windows to run Linux. So you can do, you can have multiple Linux installs all connected on networks with themselves or in that or on your local network. It's amazing the flexibility that you have with VirtualBox plus it's free. It, there's just no reason not to use it unless you already own something like a VMware and you like using that and you already know what you're doing. But you don't have to dual boot your computer. You don't have to have another computer that you install Linux on. You can do it all on your one computer. It's very convenient. So until next time, remember, learn everything, do what you love, and be kind. See you next time.